We will be demonstrating the correct procedure to properly assemble a solvent cemented joint. The first step is to assemble all the necessary tools and materials needed. For this demonstration, we will be using the following tools. A PVC pipe wheel cutter, a PVC pipe beveler, a tape measure, and a marker. The materials needed include primer, solvent cement, extra applicators if necessary, pipe, fittings, and clean dry rags. Your installation begins by inspecting the pipe and fittings to be installed. Make sure the pipe and fittings are clean, dry, and free of any cuts or cracks. Check expiration dates on both primer and cement. Spears PVC solvent cements and primers have a three year shelf life. Do not use primer or cement that is three years older than the date on the bottom of the can. While checking the date, make sure to shake or stir the solvent cement thoroughly. Do not use if dried or gelled. When cutting the pipe, remember to only use a cutter that will consistently produce a square and even cut. The use of other cutting tools may compromise the integrity of the joint. Once the pipe is cut squarely, make a 10 to 15 degree bevel around the cut using the beveling tool. This can also be accomplished by carefully working a file around the outside diameter of the cut surface. Now that the pipe is cut and beveled, clean the inside and outside of the pipe and fittings with a clean dry rag. Before applying the primer or cement, follow these four quick steps. First, ensure the use of a proper applicator of at least half the size of the pipe. In this case, we are using a two inch pipe. The minimum size dauber applicator will be one inch. Second, check the dry fit of each joint. A good dry fit is confirmed when the pipe enters the socket one third to two thirds of the socket depth before binding. This is referred to as an interference fit. If the dry pipe is able to be fully inserted into the socket without interference and is loose or wobbly, it should not be used. Third, on a scrap piece of pipe, apply primer from the can you will be using. To check the softening ability, scrape a thin layer away from the pipe. This confirms your primer is still fresh and suitable for use. Fourth, measure the inside length of the fitting socket. Mark this length on the outside of the pipe and make another mark two inches above the first mark. This will indicate how far up the pipe the primer and cement are to be applied and provide visual verification that the pipe has been fully inserted into the socket. Now apply primer to the fitting socket, then to the pipe, and again to the socket. Apply primer quickly and vigorously using a scrubbing or circular motion. Work quickly, but do not allow primer to puddle in the fitting socket or run down the pipe. Remember, your goal is to soften the two surfaces so they may fuse together. Without softening, fusion cannot occur and a bad joint may result. Without delay and while the primer is still wet, apply the cement to the pipe, then to the fitting, and again to the pipe. Use a circular motion and apply a thick even coat to the pipe with a thinner even coat inside the fitting. Again, work quickly, but do not allow cement to puddle inside the socket or run down the pipe. Assemble joint immediately while the cement is still wet. Turn socket or pipe a quarter turn during assembly until socket bottom is reached. Continue to hold assembly for approximately 30 seconds to avoid push out. The hold time will increase on larger diameter pipe and fittings. Inspect the joint. Measure from the socket entry to the second mark made on the pipe. This distance should be two inches, which confirms that the pipe is bottomed out inside the fitting. Next, confirm that there is a visible and consistent solvent cement bead between the pipe and socket all the way around the joint. Any visible cement gaps may indicate insufficient cement applied or a light body cement improperly used on a large diameter pipe. If necessary, wipe off excess solvent cement from the pipe and socket. Now that your connection is complete, remember to observe the proper set and full cure times according to the joint size, solvent cement type, and ambient hot cold temperatures. By following these procedures, you should be able to produce high quality and reliable solvent cemented joints consistently. This completes our solvent cementing installation. Thank you for watching.